for peace. I'm Maya Rose Kalila Burko. The earth and her resiliency inspires me to be an empowered feminine. When I die or cross over, I would like to be known and throughout my life as the honey on the wound. When we think about peace, when we think about breaking bread with one another, may we look at those traumas, those wounds that are, are festering on our bodies that we don't really want to look at. And may we look at them directly and put something sweet there that disinfects naturally, that is delicious and insightful and makes people want to participate in that process. And I think that modality of of practice is, is something that really will bring more peace to the world because we can't heal one another if we don't heal ourselves. When I think of peace, I think of my personal lineage. Right? I'm Mizrahi, Sephardi, and Ashkenazi. All of those are tribes of Middle Eastern Jews and then from Hungary. My family, my great-grandmother Mazal and my great-grandfather Zaki Gatas were living in Jerusalem as little kids and they fell in love. But Zaki was a Christian Arab and Mazal was a Jew from Jerusalem. And as she was getting uh, married, you know, to a, a Persian Jew that her parents fixed her up with, they ran away together and they were both uh, cut off from their families and they founded a new life together in Palestine, in Egypt. My personal lineage inspires me to remember that love Beyond borders, beyond constructs of humanity, but love is the medicine that we all really need. The youth are the keepers of peace. The adults have always been a little confused, right? They've always been stuck in their story. Not every adult. I'm here for the elders. I'm, I'm all about listening to those elders that hold that ancestral wisdom and knowledge. But speaking to the youth, and the fire that we keep for the future, for non-binary POC, for the intersectionality of the four different colors and races and countries and continents and directions coming together, for the movement that's happening right now, that you're a part of whether or not you know it. You know, the Rainbow Warriors prophecy, which is a Hopi prophecy of the unity of all four nations, all four directions, to kill the black snake and protect Unchimaka, Mother Earth, we're the seventh generation. The ones that are younger than us are the seventh generation. And we don't care about separation as much as we care about unity, uplifting, and holding one another. Because my freedom is interwoven with yours. There is no freedom for my children if your children are not free. And I want to be a great grandmother, you know? I want to sit with my friends, eat some cakes, do our ancestral work and watch our children run free without fear. And as someone who lives in Los Angeles, who deals with the murder of my black and brown friends all the time, and who really witnesses the level of trauma that's being perpetuated. And that's a really astonishing thing, right? That as America, we're semi-comfortable because we're so stuck in survival that this is happening to our children, to our younger brothers and sisters, to teenagers, to the youth. 
And so for every youth that's out there, that's feeling disempowered, that's feeling afraid, that's feeling their voice being taken out from them, I want you to remember the power of the youth that are unafraid and of the reflections of, of you that we are because there is no going back. I said never again, you know, for my ancestral trauma and for my grandfather, what happened to him when he was 12. And, you know, what's happening now, what happened to my indigenous friends, we need to be the generation to change that. Whether it's through your music, your words, your engagement with one another, asking about each other's pronouns, getting in council and circle, talking about world issues, how you're gonna make a different choice, how you can lead a voting structure, how we can lead completely other structures where we self-care and self-govern for our communities, right? As youth of many nations, healing the traumas of separation that we face, I just want to vocalize that because if we don't start listening to each other and what triggers us as the different nations that we are, as the different tribes that we are living in America, you know, like God bless America, but God bless Turtle Island, right? Indigenous peoples of this land. All the migrants that came here, we pray for their journey and how they arrived, whether it's through colonization or through fleeing and, and coming back home. Now there's an opportunity to change that narrative, to decolonize and lead a movement of awakening. There's no going back. So to the youth, I inspire you to remember that you are peace. You literally are the generation that was born for this prophecy. All you have to do is acknowledge that moment and let that sink in, right? That trust that the universe, God, Mother Earth is holding you and everything that you're holding, that you hold dear and that when you join hands with your other friends, your relatives, people that you're like, wow, I think if we joined forces, mountains would, would bloom again. You know, they wouldn't come down, they would bloom again with trees and lush, clean air would occur and the rivers would run clean and we would be able to have a structure of life where we weren't being poisoned every day by planes flying over our heads or pills are popping down our throats to be less than what we are. Because we can heal ourselves with food from our earth and with love from one another and with accountability. We need to hold each other and really do that work first so that we as a collective of many nations as one can inspire the adults to get on board. Because if we're not at peace with who we are, with what we have to process, with our trauma, with what was passed down to us through our mother's womb, through what happened to our mothers, through what happened to Mother Earth, what's happening to her, if we don't address all of those things as the youth, we can't stand together either. And I believe in us. And I'm not the only one who believes in us. We have to stop what's going on and it only starts by us coming together as a family in a humble way and in a brave way. So I inspire you all to be humble leaders, walking for peace, for unity, for the healing of our traumas as a collective, and for the unity of all of our nations. We can't wait on other people to do it anymore because they're not. Our freedom is interwoven from every womb to every non-binary being to every color on this planet whose freedom we are responsible for as the seventh generation answering prophecy. Freedom culture means to me barefoot running on hills filled with moss, brooks, life, and abundance. Freedom culture means to me the lack of restraint upon expression of soul. Freedom culture means to me that our freedoms are interwoven and we cannot be free unless our brothers and sisters of every other nation are free. Freedom culture means to me that we are making a new culture where freedom is the first policy. Freedom culture means to me the unashamed, unabashed, fierce passion to show up for one another in the deepest of humble camaraderie so that we can all express ourselves without judgment and with understanding. So I invite you to play with me for peace and for, for bravery and for you and for your grandchildren because how do you want them to remember you?